User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at Ugtastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Ugtastic. I'm at SCNA 2013, and I'm sitting down with Sarah Gray, who gave a talk yesterday morning on Mark by Mark, and it's a long one, so I have to, have to read it. <laughs> Mark by Mark some reflections on writing new worlds. And I particularly, uh, this, this uh, metaphor you used for creating new worlds resonated with me because it's, it, was, it was a book, mm -hmm. a children's book called Harold the Purple, and, his, Harold Harold and, the, and, the, purple and the Purple Crayon. crayon. Uh -huh. uh, and he creates worlds with his purple crayon. Uh, well, first, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. And what was, how did you come to use a metaphor of a, of a child with a purple crayon for software development. Well, thanks. This is, um, <laughs> when I was thinking about my talk, I was really I was focused on my evolution mm -hmm. of of how I write codes and how I write tests. And one of the things I've been focused on so much over the past many years, mm -hmm. and especially the last few years, is using the tests as like a descriptive area mm -hmm. to write what I want the code to be before it exists. So like the test files will actually be like, what might be some names that I would want to name this right. thing. And that just reminded me, it's just like the sense of you step back from the framework and you step back from, I have to write an active record model or I have to write uh, an array and just be like, what, what do I want to write? Yeah. What should it be? And I was like, that book, Harold and the Purple Crayon is so much, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's so much like yeah. that because he's there and he's writing again. And one of the things I was thinking about with us as developers is that we're writers. Right. Um, that was, I had thought about even making my talk more focused on the fact that we're writers as developers than I did. But Harold is a writer, and he's, he's got that tool, and he spends his whole time just describing things before they exist, and it just felt so like, that's what we do. Right, and so just for, for <laughs> mm -hmm. people who might not be familiar with, with the book, sure. what, what, is, what is the book? Okay, so Harold and the Purple Crayon is um, it's a children's book, and it's, it's famous. It was around when I was a child. It's mm -hmm. around now. It's just like super famous, and it's um, a very simple illustrated book with a small boy named Harold, and he has a literally a purple crayon, and every page it's like Harold wanted to take a walk, so he drew a path. Yeah. Harold, Harold wanted to go to bed, so he drew a bed. So right. it's like, what does he want to do? And he just draws it. So it's this amazing journey of imagination. And on occasion, yeah. his imagination gets away from him. And it gets away from him. So he'll do like a like this big scary dragon, right. and then he's like, oh my god, I, I don't know what to do. And then he like draws a, an ocean because his hand is shaking. Right. Or like we talked about, he draws a mountain and climbs up to the top and hadn't drawn the side down. So he's he's like, I'm gonna fall off the mountain. I, and you know, I, I read that book to my to my children, uh -huh. and um, I, it's a it's a favorite of my son. But I change it to be Conrad and the Purple Crayon. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. Uh, and, and I actually, you know, it's 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 so simple, but I even feel a little dread when he falls off of the uh, <laughs> off the, of the mountain. The, off the mountain, you know. And, but but you feel that sometimes in software when you're like, oh, this is great. I'm drawing. I'm writing this thing, and then you get right. to the top and you fall down. Yeah, or, you know, you realize you've yeah. written yourself into a corner, right? Or you've written like so such a big structure, then you don't know what to yeah. do with it, right? And then you're falling, and then you realize, oh, that's right, I got myself into this problem with software. <laughs> I can write software can, to get out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so you 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 took this book, and mm -hmm. you, did you have the book in mind before the talk, or did the talk? start and then I you I think the talk started and it was really the early ideas around the talk were really about how we're how we're writers like we sit mm -hmm. at a keyboard whatever eight hours a day and like make mm -hmm. characters which is that's writing right and I don't but I don't think that we think of ourselves as writers in general as right. a community if, if I was like are you a writer you probably would be like no I'm a coder right right and so that idea and just like thinking of of references about how writing and programming overlap just brought that book into my mind right. and it seemed like such a great like wow that's perfect there, and, <laughs> and I, I find it interesting in your previous talks you like to um take uh concepts and and try to illustrate them using mm. uh, simple animations and and illustrations uh, I, I remember one where you were talking about how um 
innumerable works. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. it was like a little factory and a little uh-huh, funnel. And uh-huh. uh, so, is that something that that predates software that you use these images and these these visual metaphors? I think it is. I think it's one of the ways that helps me think. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't. A lot of times when I'm looking at a at a like a computer science concept, sometimes mm-hmm. I'll start to feel just a little dumb. Right. right. <laughs> Honestly, just like I'm not sure how that works, or the the space is so conceptual and it's such a two dimensional space, mm-hmm. like that to help myself grasp things. Like I'm I'm an experiential learner. I'm a visual learner. So mm-hmm. just to help myself, kind of, I think experience what the thing is. Right. I will I will try to be like it's like this. And, and simplify it so that I can understand it and put myself in like like innumerable like it's a structure but it, mm-hmm. like you just write some code again it's like flat 2D code but it's like what if that was a three dimensional structure right. how would it work and I think <laughs> you know it's it's very funny that you or very appropriate that you chose Harold and Purple Crayon because when you were talking about that now I think of um, uh, of Sarah and her mechanical pencil uh, <laughs> who's who's, who's uh, in the land of software development uh-huh. and trying to take these concepts and, mm-hmm. and dealing with some these concepts that you're being introduced yeah. to and you say and then Sarah needed to uh, go and create a list so yeah. how did Sarah do that how and then Sarah you draw that? Yeah. you draw the uh, the machine yeah. that does it and then that helps you it turn. helps me learn like I think I'm such a physical learner mm-hmm. and being a physical learner in a software space is a little bit of a anomaly, maybe. Right. Or it's it's not the normal way that I think people learn, or at least that's or that they're encouraged to learn. encouraged to learn. Yeah. And so I don't know. Maybe we all learn book. like that, and and or and I just don't know it, or maybe yeah. I, I just need it. So it's like my own learning aid. Well, I think there is some kickback towards that. When when you look at stuff like the design by, um, or or excuse me, uh, was it the Head Start? Um, yeah, the Head Start books. The Head Start yes. books yeah. with, with, uh, that try to use images and, and broken mm-hmm. up uh, layouts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to be able to reach an audience that wasn't um, brought up in that purely kind of dry, here's text, here's example, exactly. here's text, here's exactly. example, that might also be out of context or, or they're just a little bit ADHD and they're trying to, right. to take these concepts and learn them in a, in a short order and it's already hard enough. Um, I, I think that there is a movement towards breaking away from these staid, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to say outdated, but their heritage seems to be from Almost the Almost more academic, yeah, in very, a way, like academic texts. Yeah. So, so yeah, so by moving away from that and, and being able to embrace it, an entirely different uh, type, of, type of learner, I think there's there's seems to be a movement towards that, and yeah. I think what you're you're doing is representative of of that um, zeitgeist, that uh, that concept of trying to get away from just here's here's a here's a bunch of right. slides, here's some text, right, 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 and get I'm gonna it. just come at you with a bunch of information and good luck. And I've seen a lot of like I've been in the in the, like the blank face mm-hmm. position, and I've observed a lot of people like also in the blank faced position when mm-hmm. you're like and it, like what you just said, here's a lot of slides, here's a lot of text, and people are like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even you know, and I, I've, I've noticed people respond well when I when I break things out. So mm-hmm. maybe I'm not the only one who needs. <laughs> well, it, there's there's a phenomenon where people, where I don't know what the name of it is, but they, it's it's where we it's almost like a, a mass hysteria <laughs> where uh, <laughs> where everybody is thinks they know something. Yeah, and or they think yeah. they understand, and we're all yeah. looking at it together, yeah. and we're we're we have the feeling of understanding it. Right. But as soon as you walk away, right, like what did I just did? Was right. I? And I think you know, like individually, a lot of people in those moments are kind of like, oh shit. Yeah. I don't really understand it, and then when I do that, I'm like, well, how would I understand? Right. That? So, <laughs> so so taking it and uh, taking that dry information and turning it into something for yourself. Yeah. And then. Uh, Another, it's been kind of a theme with some of the interviews is mm-hmm. taking the information that would be for you and then when you just open it up and let other people see it, right. then it can become for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then yeah. Uh, then turns into a talk. <laughs> and then it turns into a talk. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you very much for taking thank the time to sit so down. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. Yes. 
User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.